Okay. But I'm going to be talking about casting your winning vote this morning. And we're going to read about a group of people that did. They cast their vote. Some of them voted the wrong way. Most of them did. And they got what they voted for. In life, that's the way we get to vote for ourselves, don't we? We get to choose the right candidate. And by the way, the candidate that I want to recommend to y'all today, his name's not going to be on the ballot tomorrow, but his name is Jesus. Plain and simple. But in the, the book of Numbers we're going to read, y'all Y'all are all familiar with the story. How that God had brought Egypt out of bondage, or Israel out of the Egyptian bondage, that they'd been in for some 400 years. God showed Moses to gather his people up and they fled to Egypt. But they got out there in the wilderness. And God told them to go on over and possess the land of Canaan that he had given them for a, a, their everlasting possession. But they doubted God. Uh, but in the book of Numbers, we're going to find what happened. God sent, allowed them to send spies over into the land of Canaan. They wouldn't take God's word for it. They said, we're going to go check you out, God. So he said, okay. Gathered up a group of 12 men. And they went over into the land of Canaan. And our text takes place where... Uh, they come back. Verse 26 at the top of your page. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and they showed them the fruit of the land. Matter of fact, the I'm not going to read the scripture that tells us it, but it tells us in those same opening that they had a, a, a grape, a cluster of grapes that took two men to carry it. One cluster of grapes. It truly was bountiful land. Verse 27. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us. Surely it floweth with milk and honey. Just like you said, God. And this is a fruit of it. Nevertheless. Now here they start their little uh, drifting off. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb still the people before Moses and said, Let's go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, uh, uh we be not able to go up against the people, for they're stronger than we. We can't do it. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anna, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. 
Let's read the first four verses of Numbers 14, and we're going to hold up by the bottom of the scriptures there. And all the congregation lifted up their voice, and they cried, and the people wept that night. Because of the report they heard those other ten spies. They wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. The whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in the wilderness? And wherefore hath the Lord brought us up into this land to fall by the sword? that our wives and our children shall be a prey. We're not better for us to return to Egypt. And look what they decided. And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return unto Egypt where they were slaves. Now, election time's here again, isn't it? You hadn't heard me uh, recommend a, not one candidate. But I am going to recommend, as I mentioned earlier, the man that died for your sins and mine, his name is Jesus. But I say to you today, be thankful that you have the privilege of voting. We can choose who we want to be our leaders and our representatives. A lot of countries don't enjoy that privilege. But I can tell you this much, it didn't come easy. We've had men and women that's given their life over the years that we might have that freedom to cast our vote. But our text speaks of a people who cast a bad ballot they made a bad decision. Twelve men had gone into the land of Canaan and searched out the land. They found the evidence that the Lord had said to, that was there in the land of Canaan. A land that was flowing with milk and honey. God had not lied to them but they still had to check him out. You know, God tells us something that ought to be the final word. But they said, we're going to check you out, God. But he, they went over and to uh, their delight, God had talked the truth, but they didn't listen to all the truth. Uh, we've been hearing a lot of politicians lately talking about different issues they're running on and so forth. Uh, they were talking about defense spending. Now notice what I said. Defense. Let's think in a minute. Defense. The wall. <laughs> I thought it was unusual. I read across the scripture down a little further on down. You'll see the word defense is used. D-E-F-E-N-C-E. -E Unlike we use, we spell the word defense. But every country have, has to have a defense, don't they? Back in Bible days, they built great walls, didn't they? They didn't have helicopters in those days or planes that could come over. They, they uh, strengthened themselves by building protective walls around Y'all all are well aware of what's been going on here. Uh, there are a group of uh, South American people that are headed this way. And I'm not for sure that I understand all the reason yet. I've heard a lot of people trying to explain it, but I, I don't find any uh, credible uh, substance yet. Uh, but... Our commander in chief has sent down, I think, up to 15,000 troops right now to protect our borders. That's called defense, isn't it? Uh, but our candidates have spoken about 
Uh, whether we needed a wall or not, or a fence. Uh, but I'm going to tell you this much. We all need defense. If you would, look at, on down to uh, Numbers 14, verse 9, toward the bottom of your page. It says, Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for their bread for us, their defense, and there we are, is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. The scripture says, if God be for us, who can be against us? And they were doing the Lord's will when they set out to cross Jordan, but they, but they balked on him. And now they want to go back to Egypt. But folks, our greatest defense is God. If we don't have him on our side or if we don't get on his side, we're defeated to start with. And I can tell you this much today, we've got a lot of ills wrong with this country now. Pick up the news this, just this morning. They found three people shot to death out here off a of greenhouse. Man and 14, 16 year old uh, stepdaughters of his. And boy, yesterday, his mother was getting on him about his grades in school. 15 years old. So he murders his own mother and gets a couple of buddies to help him dispose of the body to make a grave and bury the body. And folk, I could go on and on. But our society and our people are headed the wrong direction. God will be our defense if we'll let him. But we've got to vote for him, haven't we? Only two men told the truth. That was Joshua and Caleb. The other ten lied about what they saw over in the land, if you will. Look at verse 32 and verse 33. Now you're talking about a Halloween story. We just went through uh, the holiday that uh, the world celebrated called Halloween. But you're talking about a Halloween story. Verse 32 and 33 is fitting. It says, And they brought up an evil report of the land. That means they lied. Which they had searched under the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. Now, the earth just opens up and swallows up people. That's what they said. The earth just eats them up. And then verse 33 said, <laughs> And we saw the giants there, the sons of Anak, which become of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. So we were in their sight. You know how big a grasshopper is? Compare that to a, a human being. So this was all fiction. It was an evil or a lying report. But that's what the people heard. They heard ten versions of it against two that said, hey, let's go on over and possess the land. They voted. The majority of them by far, a ten were the most of them that followed them of Israel, But look what Joshua and Caleb had to say. Look at verse 7 down the, toward the uh, bottom of your page. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through it to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. 
and their defense is parted from them and the Lord is with us, not them. Fear them not. That's what Joshua and Caleb said. So they had two different versions. They had the, the Halloween story. And then they had the true story. 10 verses 2. So all the people heard that, the reports and they voted the wrong way. They said, let's go back to Egypt and not cross Jordan. He got them in trouble, didn't it? Their vote was a winning ticket for them. They got what they asked for. If you would, look down to the bottom of your page, verse 29 and 35. Here's what they got. Your carcasses or bodies shall fall in this wilderness. And all that were numbered of you according to your whole number, from 20 years old and upward, which have murmured against me, meaning God, I, the Lord, have said, I will surely do it unto all this evil congregation that are gathered together against me. In this wilderness they shall be consumed, and there they shall die. Not one, all those 20 years old and upward, were accountable to God. And God had passed a sentence on them. They could not cross Jordan. Remember, there was a group of them got together and said, let's go on across Jordan. God said, don't do it. But now a sentence has been passed that all those that chose, they had a vote. They made their decision. What about Joshua and Caleb? Well, the Lord let them live, didn't he? Remember old Caleb when he got over to the cross? Give me that mountain. Joshua and Caleb were the only two adults over 20 years old that were going to be allowed to cross Jordan. Now we see old Moses and he come up and the Lord let him look at it. He said, Moses, you can see, but you can't go. They were outnumbered, Joshua and Caleb were. Now, folks, I'm going to give you a little statistics here in a moment. Joshua and Caleb still got what they wanted, didn't they? Their vote still counted. Your vote's going to count one way or another. If you cast your ballot for God, you've made a good decision. If you've chosen him, a vote for him is a vote for you. You know, they were talking about uh, another issue, uh, things that discussed was poverty, the poor and all that we, uh, but uh, the politicians, if you will, uh, they heard what a prospering uh, place that we are and so forth. Uh, but I thought of that, a poverty thing. The Lord said he became poor that we might be rich. He became poor. Took on himself the form of a man, of a nobody. Had no earthly possessions. Your vote for him is a vote against poverty, spiritually speaking and physically. Another thing that our politicians have been talking about, and you hear me here because this takes in a whole other thought, is universal health care. In case you haven't studied your scriptures enough to know what's coming, 
what's coming down the pipe. There's going to be such a thing as universal health care because there's going to be that universal, that one world system that's going to come on the scene which we're headed for right now. I believe that. It already was said in Sunday school this morning about our friend Oprah Renfrey. He's over in Georgia campaigning this week. We said this earlier, but some of you didn't hear it. And she says, there are many ways to know God, not just one way. I don't care, Oprah Winfrey, Donald Trump, James Cobb, or whoever said it, there's still not but one way. One way. And the Lord is that way, isn't he? How many times have we had that, heard that scripture and quoted, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, none, cometh unto the Father but by me. But thank the Lord, we can come through him. We sing that old hymn, Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Nothing but the blood of the Lamb. But folk, the blood of Jesus didn't cover part of our sins. It covered all of them, didn't it? He shed his precious blood because he loved us. I heard some of the politicians talking about more jobs. My twist on that is if you vote for Christ, you'll have a job in his vineyard. He said the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Folk, how many people do you know that's willing to get out and knock on the door Go, go pester people on Sunday afternoon while they're sitting around watching the ball game and say, I won't tell you about Jesus. Well, folk, we're blessed to have folk here that are doing that. The Lord said the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. And I thank you fellows and ladies, that, uh, whoever might be present that's been joining in on that. Uh, your vote your vote is a winning vote in your life may not be in the majority but we can well see Israel out of the twelve ten of them were lying spies if you will never been in the majority number wise the Lord operates in the minority. When old Elijah faced those 400 prophets of Baal, how many do you, you see that supporting Elijah? Nobody but God. So folks, if we have to take a stand, be sure we take the right stand, and that's for the Lord. But the majority of the people usually have been wrong. It was in this case, in our text we just read. Joshua, one of those two that told the truth, challenged the people. If you will, look at the bottom of your page. The last verse that Joshua, what he had to say. Joshua 24. Joshua said, and if it seem evil unto you, to serve the Lord. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, 
we will serve the Lord. And folks, the Lord give us not, not enough backbone to say that and then follow through on it. Y'all know this scripture. Jesus said, you for me or you against me? I heard one this week. People have been to a costume party. Being, you know, what they're talking about Halloween. They were walking on me to come a big rain like it's done a whole lot lately. While they were walking down the road, there was a, a building there, a little church where people were having church on Wednesday night. And the people in their costumes darted into the church. One of the boys dressed up like the devil. <laughs> As the lady ran over to him and said, you know I've been on your side most of the time anyway. <laughs> oh, <Lord. laughs> well, we know that that's witchcraft, isn't it? We don't celebrate Halloween, but I couldn't help but say, well, that little lady said, well, <laughs> it's time to take a stand. She took a stand for the devil, didn't she? But folk, we're going to be either for the Lord or against him. You can't be in between. In the day of judgment, either you're going to know him or you're not going to know him. You get to choose. You get to make your own vote. The only candidate that can get things turned around in our life is named Jesus again. Our candidates have been speaking in terms of how many trillions of dollars that uh, our country owes. And they say our debt is much. But I can tell you this much, folks. The debt of sin is heavy. And judgment is coming. But the good news, Jesus paid that sin debt. He didn't pay part of it. He paid it all. Some people believe that you can get saved and get lost again, so forth, back and forth. And let me remind you what the scripture says. That being true, if you can be saved and then lost again, Jesus would have to go back to the cross and die in your place again. You're not going to do that. One time is enough. Here this morning, you haven't trusted Christ as your Savior. You need to do that today. If you have and you haven't followed him in baptism, you need to do that. That's a sign of obedience unto the Lord. It doesn't save you, but the putting away, the putting away of the filter of flesh, but it's an answer to a good conscience toward God.